Well, there's a debate in the academic literature about um, the extent to which uh, people um, believe that uh, there is a, a consensus by climate scientists um, on climate change, which, which there clearly is overwhelmingly across the science community internationally. Um, we asked a question um, what proportion um, of scientists do uh, uh, believe that climate change is happening and is caused by humans, and in fact it was only about 30% who agreed that over 80% of scientists agreed on this, which would, would be the um, position actually within the science community. So we were quite surprised about that, but it is consistent with other evidence from the uh, similar questions that have been asked in the United States. And it's thought that this question may well be a gateway belief, that if you um, engage people with the question of climate change and can discuss with them the fact that science really does agree um, almost overwhelmingly um, uh, about the issue, then they're, they're more concerned about climate change and more prepared to um, actually take action to do something about it. Yeah. Um, well, very broadly, um, in fact, there were quite a lot of similarities first. It would be worth mentioning those, that people have strongly um, supported re renewable energy. Um, they see that coal is um, not a, um, a fuel for the future to um, produce energy. Um, very few people were supportive of fracking in any of the four countries. Um, the one big difference was on, on nuclear energy, where there was um, relatively low support in France, Germany, and Norway for nuclear energy, but more support than opposition in the UK. And that's consistent with um, what, what we've known in the past um, from our own surveys and other surveys um, in the UK um, uh, of sort of a change in attitude towards nuclear power over the last 15 years. We asked a, a range of policy uh, questions which will be of interest to um, policymakers, government and others in the UK and the other four countries as well as other European countries. Um, in particular, people were very much in support of subsidies both for renewable energy, which is on the supply side of the energy system, and for helping to improve in efficiency in people's homes, which is on the demand side. And of course, we have to kind of solve both of those problems um, to deal with climate change. And when it came to paying for those um, uh, improvements in the energy system, uh, there was more ambivalence. Uh, people were, were less supportive of, for example, attacks on fossil fuels or for increasing the price of electricity. Um, um, uh, uh, to help um, combat climate change. So how you actually pay for them, either through personal contribution or, or government um, funding, um, it, it is more of an issue for people, I think. So um, we asked, because the survey went, was um, conducted about six months after the Paris Agreement and there had been a lot of discussion about that, um, certainly in, in the media, um, we wanted to ask about um, what people thought about that. We gave them a little description of the agreement and then asked whether they supported their own country being um, a, a part of that agreement. I think it was over two thirds in all four countries were, were supportive of that. And in a way that surprised us that there was such strong support um, for the international agreement um, that, that had been struck in Paris uh, at the end of 2015. Um, also interestingly, um, in relation to potential political developments in some countries which, which potentially may, we don't know, but may withdraw from that agreement, there was very strong support for penalties um, uh, for countries which which actually don't collaborate with that agreement or which withdraw don't take part in the or which which um, uh, withdraw from the agreement so um, again I think a strong consensus there in in all four countries that, that internationally we have to move this forward in some way and the Paris agreement is seen as one of the vehicles for that <laughs>